Hey guys, I am back with another video and in this video I am going to talk about one very critical part of almost every application that is authentication and how can we implement custom authentication with one Blazor WebAssembly standalone app in .NET 8. So in .NET 8 we have two different approaches to create Blazor WebAssembly application. One is Blazor Web App with interactive WebAssembly render mode. Okay, that is uh, WebAssembly application hosted under a ASP.NET Core web application. Okay, then we have a different flavor that is Blazor WebAssembly standalone app. So in this there is no server part. This is standalone. Uh, we could say static application and if we need to connect to server we can use HTTP API request for that. All right. So in this video, we are going to see how can we implement custom authentication with Blazor WebAssembly standalone app. All right. So for this, I'm in my Visual Studio 2022 that is required for this. So here I'm going to create a Blazor WebAssembly standalone app. This is a template in VS 2022. So let's create it. And let's call it Blazor Auth was or I don't know what should I call it Blazor was or something like this. Okay. Next, it is going to be .NET 8 authentication type none because we are going to implement our own custom authentication progressive web application. We don't need this. Include sample pages. Yes, let it include. We'll add authentication authorization over the sample pages only. Configure for HTTPS. That is fine. Let's create it. Right, so it created this standalone application. So you can see we have only one project that is WebAssembly project. Let me zoom it. All right. So this is Microsoft.NET SDK Blazor WebAssembly. This is WebAssembly project. All right. If we run it, it should just run just fine. Simple project it is. sometimes this happens with me that when I start the Blazor WebAssembly project it simply opens this about blank page and then nothing happens. I don't know if this is some uh, system specific thing or what it is I don't know. Do let me know in the comment if you guys also face this issue sometimes. All right so we have this simple application home counter and weather. All right. So we are going to add implement uh, authentication in this application only. All right. So first thing, uh, authentication related services, NuGet packages, those are not inbuilt in this Blazor WebAssembly applications. Those are a part of ASP.NET Core application in general with Web API, MVC, Razor Pages, Blazor Web App, Blazor Server for all those. But for Blazor WebAssembly, there is no such package already pre. Uh, installed so we need to install one NuGet package first so we'll go to manage NuGet packages and then we are going to install one package that is Microsoft ASP.NET Core okay let me type it Microsoft ASP.NET Core components ASP.NET Core dot components. Okay, I need to type it completely. Dot components dot web assembly dot authentication. This is the package we need. So Microsoft ASP.NET Core. Can we? Yeah, Microsoft ASP.NET Core components web assembly dot authentication. This is the one we need. So let's install it. Apply. Accept. 
and we have it now all right so it got added here microsoft asp netcore components web assembly authentication this will, this is the one now when we talk about authentication in blazor application in general we have one authentication state provider class okay which is provided by blazor for all the authentication related needs so we need authentication state provider the way we implement our authentication we need to create a derived class from that authentication state provider class okay so for this what i'm going to do i'm going to create a folder in this application if i'll say um, authentication and inside this folder i'm going to create a class i'll say let's take custom authentication provider or maybe custom auth state provider something like this dot cs all right we have this class here custom auth state provider so this needs to be a subclass of authentication state provider okay which will come from microsoft asp.net core component authorization this one and this is an abstract class which has one method that is one abstract method actually we need to provide body for that if you look this is an abstract class here we have this one event authentication state changed we are going to use this then we have get authentication state async this is the abstract method we need to provide body for then we have this notify authentication state change method which actually notifies all the consumers of this event authentication state change that something has changed so this has only these three things we need to implement this method all right so let's do this implement abstract class and we are here okay now the way we are going to okay this should return so right now i'll simply say return task dot prom result this is dummy i'm going to change it all right now in blazor web assembly application uh, we need to store the current logged in users state somewhere in the browser there is no server in web assembly so we need to store that in browser only and in browser we have web storage which has two parts local storage and session storage session storage is for short term temporary data store which will be when we close the browser that state is going to be wiped out from the browser then we have local storage that is a persistent storage inside browser okay we can store state in that local storage then even if we close browser open it some other day it will be there unless we are manually clearing that state from the browser's local storage okay so it depends on our requirement that which state strategy we need we need session storage or local storage whatever state storage we need we require we are going to use that okay so in order to interact with that we need javascript okay so for that javascript what i am going to do i am going to create a class here so i'll say public class let's say browser storage service something like this all right i'm going to use this browser storage service and here we can have private const string let's say storage type okay you can simply modify this one thing if you need uh, session storage you could simply say session storage this is browser's api web uh, window dot session storage window dot local storage that is this thing okay we are going to use this now let's use local storage now in order to interact using javascript from our blazor application we need i js runtime so i'm going to inject that so i'm going to create a constructor here and here i'll say uh, i js runtime i'm going to inject this let's name it js runtime and let's create a private read only field underscore js runtime all right now we can use this now the way we are going to use this 
we will have three methods first private async task we'll say save to storage which will have in local storage and session storage these are key value pair storage right so we need to have some key and then some value so we'll have string key and then value could be of any type but in local storage session storage we always store data in string format but but what we can do we can simply make this generic and we can make that conversion that converting the object to string and then converting string of uh, string data back to object we can have it as a responsibility of this browser storage service only so what i'm saying i'll use t data value whatever type of data value we have we'll use this okay this is save to storage then we are going to have one more public async task and we'll say get from storage okay type of data we need t data so this task from here we need to have t data it will return this type of data using this key which we use to save the data to storage okay save to storage get from storage then we will have one more here we'll say public async task and we'll we'll say remove from storage this is again going to have this key and we'll have this method so these three methods at least these three methods we need all right so let's start working on these but before that we need to have this conversion and deconversion logic right convert object to string and then string back to object so what we can do the best approach is to use json serialization for this so we'll convert object of type t data, t data to string using json serializer so for that let's create some helper methods here so i'll say private static string we'll say serialize it can get any type of data and here we'll say t data which is of type of data then we are going to have one more method private static t data we'll say deserialize this is generic so we'll say t data and this is going to have string data or we could say string json data something like this all right so now we need to implement these two methods first let's provide body for this we could have directly used json serializer in these methods but i always use this separate the reason is we should have the same serialization and deserialization uh, json serializer options for both if tomorrow we want to change this it will be a separate change ideally you could extract out this into a separate service as well if maybe tomorrow you want to change the json, JSON serialization library then also you could simply use that standalone if it is loosely coupled so that's also approach but i'm having it here only so here i'll say private uh, static read only json serializer options underscore json serializer options equals this now in here we could have some default serialization options if we want to have something for example what all these math all these properties we can set okay property naming policy property name case insensitive <coughs> right indented all these stuff we can use but right now we don't have anything so I'm going to simply remove it and I'll have the simple empty JSON serializer options. All right. Now with serialization, we can simply say JSON serializer dot serialize. And in this, we could provide our data and JSON serializer options. And we need to return this. And because this is a single line, we can easily change this to expression body method. So I'm going to do this. And our serialize method is ready. Then we have deserialize method. So for this, first we'll verify if we have JSON data. If this is uh, not null, so here we'll say if not string dot is null or white space okay. JSON data. Then we'll simply deserialize and return. So we'll say JSON serializer 
dot deserialize to type of t data and the data is going to be json serialized uh, not json serializer this json data and we'll provide json serializer options which is our underscore json serializer options all right now if that's not the case that means json data is null or empty then we'll simply return null from and because we are returning null we need to make it t data nullable if this is not working we can use default that is the point because it does not know what t data is we need to tell it that t data could be nullable but if we are not using it we can use this default and now if this is nullable it will by default return null so we have serialized and deserialized methods ready we have this section which is related to json serialization all right now we have these three methods so save to storage we are going to save to storage for that we can use underscore js runtime dot invoke void async because saving to storage does not return anything as a result the method we are going to use that is going to be this local storage that means this storage type so here we could directly use this storage type local storage now on this local storage we have three methods those are local storage dot set item key value then we have local storage dot get item key and then we have local storage dot remove item key these three methods in general we have we have one more method to clear everything but we are not going to use this method because we are not concerned about this right now if you want to implement it you can also implement this one but we will implement these three that's why we have these three methods save to storage which is the set item get from storage which is this get item then remove from storage that is this remove item all right so storage keys here we'll say storage type dot set item okay and these methods these are same on session storage as well what i mean is this thing we have local storage dot set item session storage dot set item local storage dot get item session storage dot get item so these are the same name just the storage type is different that's why i had it here if you want to change this to session storage there is no change required in these implementation everything works fine and now you can also make it maybe this one also configurable you could maybe get a type from here maybe string of type storage type or maybe you could have some enum here right enum of type storage type and then you can have local storage as a storage on the basis of that so there are a ton of customizations configurations you can do for this to make it compatible with your vision with your application okay i'm taking a simpler approach here all right so this is set item now the set item it requires two parameters one is key string and second is value string all right so here first parameter is going to be this key so we'll have this key and the second parameter is going to be value which is actually a string representation but right now we have this value data so here we'll say word serialized data equals we could say serialized value okay now this is serialized data and we can pass it here now our set item method is ready that will save to storage method is ready all right now to get from storage let's work on it so this get item it returns the string value okay the serialized value it returns it so here what we'll say var serialized data equals we'll say await underscore js runtime dot this time we are going to use invoke async method this one generic invoke async invoke void async that means it is not going to return anything but invoke async returns something and there's something is going to be string of type nullable nullable string because if that key does not exist or there is no data with that key then it is going to return as null that's why we are 
having it as nullable string. All right. So nullable string, and here we'll have our key. That's all. Ah, uh, we need to provide this get item method. This one, this name. So storage type dot get item. All right, and then key is going to be the second parameter in this. Now we have the serialized data, which is of type string, nullable string actually. From here, we could directly return deserialize, and we can provide this serialized data here. We need to tell this deserialize that you need to return t data. Now this again is going to be nullable. All right, and this should also be nullable because from deserialize we are checking if serialized data is nullable or null. Then we are not deserializing it. We are simply returning default value that is null in this case. All right. Then we have this remove from storage. It is also not going to return anything. So we could simply use this invoke void async thing. So we'll say await JS runtime invoke void async storage type dot remove item with one parameter of key. All right. So our browser storage service is ready. Now we can move it to a separate. File so browser storage service we have this now we need to register this first so let's go to program dot cs and let's register it before builder dot build and after creating builder we could register it anywhere so let's register it builder dot services dot add so singleton and scoped both are same for Blazor web assembly all right so add scoped browser storage service and we are good all right now we can inject this browser storage service in our cu custom auth state provider this class okay all right so here i'm going to say i'm going to have a constructor and this i'm going to store oh my god what i pressed control b it is going to build. Let's cancel. All right. So browser storage service. Let's say browser storage service. And I'm going to have private read only field here. Underscore browser storage service. Now we can move. Now this get authentication state async. How this method works. This method uh, gets called by this blazer itself when it is first or running our application we could say so at the first time and we are refreshing it so when control flow comes to this application for the first time then it executes this so at this, this time we need to check if we have authentication state ready or whatever authentication state we have basically okay so here when it comes to this place we need to check if we have authentication related data in our browser storage Okay, so for that, what we'll say, we'll say what user equals, we'll say await browser storage service dot get from storage and we need to provide some key. And we are going to use this key multiple times, so it's better to have it as a constant here. Where I'll say private const string and let's say user storage key and we could name it whatever we want. So let's call it user. And then we are going to use it here. So user storage key. What it is saying is saying argument method string cannot be inferred. Oh, the type return type. We need to provide return type from this get from storage. So we need to have some type which will be uh, the user representation basically. So we can have it anywhere. Right now, let's have it here. We'll move it to somewhere else. So public class, let's say user. And here we are going to have, let's say, public int ID, public string name, and maybe, I don't know, public string, yeah, ID and name is enough. Or maybe if we have some token, login token, then we can have that here as well. From here, we'll say get from storage, and we need user, the label user as well. If it does not exist, then all right. Then we'll check if user is null. That means user 
auth state is not in browser's local or session storage. Session local storage. That means the user is not logged in. Okay. But user is not logged in. From here, we will simply return or we will not do anything. Then we have one more thing. We will have else case. Here we will say that user's auth state is in the browser storage. User auth state is there in the browser storage. That means user is logged in. Okay. So we can fill out user details from this storage. All right. So in this custom auth state provider, I'm going to have one property prop of type user. And I'll say we could call it user or logged in user, whatever we want to call it, or let's say current user. All right. We will have a default value of new if we want or another approach could be we can have it as nullable if we want it's up to us what we are uh what we whatever way we want to implement this it's up to you all right now if user is logged in we need to fill this value so this current user here we'll say current user equals user all right and if user is not null here, then it means user is null. Then we'll say simply current user equals new, which is empty thing we are going to add. All right. Now this is fulfilling the current user. That is not what we are going to. We are going to use a different approach, but this is how I'm going to show you. Now this method should return authentication state. So Blazor is going to use this method. So we need to return correct authentication state back to the caller, which is going to be Blazor framework itself. So we need to generate this thing authentication state. So if we check authentication state takes one constructor parameter of type claims principle. And if we go to claims principle here, we could have one constructor. We need to find that. So we can provide our identity to this this I identity and this I identity for this, we could provide this claims identity class and this claims identity has a constructor where we can provide our list of claims. Okay. And it's always a good idea to provide for authentication type when we are implementing a custom authentication. So this is the way, this is the constructor we are going to use. So list of claims, I numerable of claims, then string name of authentication type. So in this custom auth provider, what we are going to use, we are going to have one more constant private const string. We'll say authentication type and its name is up to you. Custom auth is fine. Now we need to create this authentication state. So first thing we need to have identity. So we'll say our identity equals, we'll say new claims identity in this we can provide this list of claims and authentication type. So for list of claims, let's provide one array of claims. So new claim. And in this, we could provide key value pair. Here we'll say claim types dot, let's say name identifier, which is for ID. We can provide ID. So we know this user is here. So we'll say user dot id dot to string. And we should move this thing inside this else part because here we know that user is not null. So we could ac access user id here. All right. So this is id. The same way we could use others as well. For example, we have name and token. So here we could use name, which is going to be user dot name. We don't need to string here because name is already in string format. Then same thing we have token. So for this, we could use, can we use something if that is 
not we could simply provide something else so let's say token and here we'll say user dot token our claims are ready the second parameter we are going to use authentication type and this is fine so let's extract these claims out here we'll say var claims equals this array we have these claims and here we need to tell it that it is going to be claims array then this identity claims the second parameter authentication type all right our identity is ready then from this identity we are going to ge generate our claims principle which is going to be new claims principle and we can provide its identity to this and then we can generate our authentication state which we want to return from here. let's say auth state equals new authentication state here we could provide this claims principle claims principle and then we can simply return this auth state from here all right now we need to return from here as well from the first where user is null if user is null we will simply return empty or blank authentication state for this we will say return new authentication state which needs a claims principle so to this we will simply provide empty claims principle so this method is ready which is going to be called from blazor framework blazor will call it all right so this is fine this is for the first time whenever first request is coming to our application or whenever i'm let's say refreshing the browser step for the first time or i'm navigating this website for the first time at that time this method is going to be called now this is the thing after that if user is not authenticated so we need to have some login and logout logic right so for those methods i'm going to add those methods here here i'll say public async task I'll say login async. We could have username and password here. Here we will make API call with the username and password and obtain the correct that is the thing but here in this i am not going to call any api i am just saying that let's assume you have got the username and password uh, you got the user then what you are going to do okay so for here i am just going to use this new user and i am going to have some dummy values here first we need id let's take one second we need name let's use my name Then we need token. Let's use some random token values. Now we have this user. First thing we need here, we need to save this user to browser's storage. Right? So let's do this. Here we'll say await underscore browser's storage service dot save to storage. Key is going to be what was the key name it is user storage key so user storage key and that value is going to be this user this object now we have this data in storage all right now we need to tell the framework that something has happened that we have changed the authentication state so if we go to its base class authentication state provider here we have this authentication state changed this event and for this we have this helper method notify authentication state change to this we could provide this task of authentication state task which will actually call this so we need to call this method from there all right so for this first thing we need to create authent auth state method here uh, auth state object here so auth state object creation logic is going to be same as this one 
we need to create claims identity claims principle then auth state now because we are duplicating this lo logic so it's better to create a helper method for this so here what we are going to do we are going to call a method so we'll say private static and this should return maybe authentication state only authentication state let's say generate auth state something like this from user object all right then we could have this complete thing extracted out in this method and from here we could return our auth state and this auth state we can use this from both of these methods so let's go to first our get authentication state async method so here what we are going to do we are going to clear all these things out here we'll say var auth state equals generate auth state from user like this all right and same thing we are going to do in this login async so here we'll say var auth state equals generate auth state from this user object all right then we'll say notify authentication state changed we'll say task dot from result auth state so we are notifying this auth state change all right we'll implement the consumer of this but right now let's do this only so now we have login same way we will have a more method here for logout okay logout does not require any parameter so in this logout first thing we need to do we need to remove users state from the browser storage so here we'll say await browser storage service dot remove from storage this should be user storage key all right and after this we need to notify authentication state change again but this time it should be an empty authentication state right the way we are having it here so this also we are going to repeat so let's have one private property here so here we could say private authentication state we will say let's say empty auth state and this is going to be a computed property this we are going to say new claims principle this is actually a shorthand for this authentication state because we have this already here we could simply remove these things so this is fine so empty auth state now we can use it here where we had this so here we will say remove empty auth state as well return empty auth state and then in logout as well what we will say we will say auth state equals empty auth state but because this is directly property we don't need to do this instead what we will do we will directly call notify authentication state changed and here we need to say this so here we will say task dot from result empty auth state now our login and logout methods are ready all right now this notify authentication state change we need to react to this event whenever this event is getting fired so for this we'll go to our constructor in constructor we'll say we have notify authentication state changed uh what is the name of that property not notify let's check this is authentication state changed this event authentication state changed all right so for this we'll add our method here to so custom auth state provider and it's called authentication state changed we have this method here in this method we will check what is current auth state so it gives us this task of authentication state so from this we could get our auth state we we'll say var auth state equals await this task. So now we have this auth state. Now what it auth state could be? If we go to our login, we could have this current auth state with the current user's detail. That means user is logged in. And for logout, we could have this empty auth state. So these two are possible values for this. 
All right. So we need to check what current value we have. So here, what we'll do now, we have this auth state. Then we'll check if auth state is not null and auth state dot user where we have our claims principle. From this, we can access any value. So here, let's do this. Let's first check this condition. If auth state is not null, then we'll simply try to get the ID from this auth state. So which will be in the string ID, of course. We could do this auth state dot user dot find first value, claim types dot name identifier dot find first value. Okay, we have find first value method, so this directly returns value, but this comes from some other method. Okay, some other package, I don't know from where, but we could use this find first. From here, we could use value. Now it could be in a label. Next thing we need to check if this ID STR is not null. So we'll say string is null or white space ID STR. That means we have ID STR. And cool, we have this next logic. So if ID STR is not null, and in dot try parse, that means this ID STR is is a valid integer. ID STR is not null or empty. Then ID STR is a valid integer. And then to be double sure, we'll check if this is greater than zero as well. If ID is positive integer, that means greater than zero. Then we that means we have a valid ID. That means user is actually logged in. If we have user's ID, that means user is already logged in. Then you could continue further. All right. So now we have this ID STR. Same way we could get our name and token. So then we can generate this current user from this. So new user ID is this ID, name and token. Here we know that this is not going to be nullable. So we could simply return remove this question marks and we can add this that this is not null we know. All right, so we have generated our current user. That's what we are going to do here. And then we'll simply return from here. Now at the very end of this method, custom provider authenticate state change, we'll say current user equals new. That means we'll set it to blank user. Now, if auth state is null, then also it is going to set this. If somehow the ID is not positive, ID is not a valid ID, and anything happens which does not satisfy, satisfy this, then it will simply set current user back to the empty user. That means the user is not logged in. And then we can access this current user in our application directly, wherever we need this. All right. So now we know that this authentication state changed. We are setting this from this get authentication state testing method as well, right? So looks like everything is fine here. All right. So right now we have implemented everything related to this custom auth state provider. Now, wherever we need, we could simply use this custom auth state provider. So that means we need to register it. We'll go to program.cs and here we'll say, builder.services.id scope custom auth state provider. Now we are good. Now for the first time, when request comes to our Blazor application, then Blazor framework itself calls this authentication state provider. So whenever it is calling this authentication state provider, we should return this custom auth state provider because this is the implementation which we need in our application, right? We have all our user related logic in this custom auth state provider. So we will tell that if you are asking for authentication state provider, we will provide you custom auth state provider. All right. So for this, what we'll do, we'll make one more registration here. We'll say builder dot services. All right. Dot add scope authentication state provider. For this, we'll say that you should, whenever you are calling this, we'll provide you provider 
Then from this provider, we'll say get required service custom auth state provider. That means this is going to be the same instance which this one is. So the same instance is going to be used whenever we are using authentic state provider as an injected class or we are injecting custom auth provider directly. It is always going to be the same instance. So now with this, everything is in place. Now we are good to use this. All right. So how we are going to use this first thing, whenever we use authentic state provider, it flows through as a cascading parameter. So we need to go to app, the main router where is our complete application. We are going to wrap this in a cascading authentication state this tag all right we can use this microsoft aspnet core dot components dot authorization we can add this in an underscore import short razor so we'll say using using microsoft aspnet core components authorization so that we can directly use this cascading authentication state now it is going to pass through this information to each and every component in our application all right now let's do one thing. Let's go to our uh, layout, main layout. In main layout, we have this nav menu, right? In nav menu, at the very end, let's add one more item here. Here we'll say authorize view. In this authorize view, we can check if we have authentic authorized or not. So for this, we have authorized state we have not authorized state and we have authorizing state we have these three states so if it is authorizing then it is checking the authentication state so we can simply have a span here span class we are going to have text white and here we'll say checking or let's say checking auth state Okay, now if we, it is not authorized, we will simply have a button here with the type maybe button only. And we'll add some class, we'll say btn, btn primary. And here we'll say login. If it is not authorized, that, that means we need to login. So for this, we can simply add a on click method here. And here we could say login async. And we can define this method in code block here. So here we'll say private async task login async. Now we need to login and for login, we will inject our custom auth state provider class here. So inject custom auth state provider which will come from this blazor was not dot authentication. Okay. So let's name it auth state provider only. And here we can in login async, we could say auth state provider dot login async, then some dummy username password. Because we are not using this right now, but ideally you would have a login form where you will have your username and password fields input text box, then you will provide this value from there. Here I'll say dummy password and dummy username like this dummy username. It needs to be awaited, so we'll simply await it. And now we have this login AC. All right. Now if user is logged in, that means we have this authorized state. Here we know that user is logged in. Now what we can do? First thing, we can simply display a label with class same text white. And in here, we could say hello and then username. Now in authorized view, we have access to this underscore con at the right context. From here, we could access user, which is of type claims principle. And from this, we could use, we could access any claim. So for displaying the username, we could say user dot claims dot first or default. Although we know this is always going to be we are always going to have this value. So let's use first. And here we will say claim types dot name dot value. 
This is the claim types dot name. Okay, first or uh, let's use find first method. Find first, right? It was find first only. What was the name of this method? If we go to our custom auth state providers. what was it yes it was find first find first find first and no accessible method claims is a enumerable okay not claims just user dot find first and dot value so now we have username here we know that this is not going to be null so we could add this exclamation shine null for giving operator so hello username after that, we will have logout button. So let's copy this login button. Let's change this to button primary to button danger. And let's call it logout. Rename this login async method here to logout. All right. Let's provide body for logout async method as well. So here we'll say logout async. And then we'll call logout async method from here. Logout async, which does not need any parameter. So looks like this is fine. Now let's make one of these methods to protect it. So we are going to change this weather dot razor page. We are going to add an attribute to this, which is going to be this authorized attribute. Authorized attribute. That means this page is going to be protected. We can't access this page before logging in all right enough talking let's try to run this we'll see how it behaves now now we have some error let's see what it is if you go to console console here we should see the actual error which is hmm it is saying unhandled exception rendering component cannot provide a value for property authorization policy provider of type Microsoft ASP.NET Core components authorization dot authorized view. We are using authorized view in our application. In our nav menu here, this authorized view for this, there is no policy provided for this because authorization authentication is not built in with Blazor WebAssembly. We installed one package for this you remember this microsoft asp net core component web assembly authentication so we need to add something in our program.cs in order to enable authentication right so for that we can come here we'll say builder.services.add authorization core this is the basic bare bone package for authorization so we are going to use this authorization core now it will provide that authorization value and authorization policy default authorization policy for this now if we run it, we should see it coming without any issue. This is loading. And we have this login here and we have all these three buttons. We can navigate it around and weather is still coming. It should not have come because we have authorized attribute. We'll fix that. But let's try login. Now we have hello Abaprince logout. Now if we check the browse console window, let's go to application. Let's go to local storage here. If we see, we have this key value. We have this user key and we have this value, right? So that means our browser storage service is working. What that means is if I'm going to refresh this page now, it should have that state already, right? We have login already. So it is logged in. Now, if I press logout, now if I go to browser storage application, local storage, there is no that key value. And now if I'm going to refresh it, it should show login button because we are not logged in right now. Right. So login and logout is working. Everything is fine. Now, if you go to weather, it should come. But with logout, it should not come. It should not be here. But that means there is some issue with this. Let's check what it is. So in this, we said, uh, where is our weather? We said that this should be protected. We are adding authorized attribute. Now, if you go to app.razor, here we have this router. In this router, we have found if that route exists. In that, we have this route view. So, in order to work with 
authorized attribute in blazor this shouldn't be route view this should be authorized route view so we have one more version of this that is authorized route view now it will consider that authorized attribute all right now let's run it again and let's see how it looks now so let's go to weather you see not authorized you if you go to counter this is working if you go to home this is working if you go to weather this is not authorized we are not getting data that means that thing is working let's go to home let's log in now let's go to weather now we can see this data right we can go to counter again home weather everything is working fine now we are on weather let's hard refresh it is working and now also we can see the weather now if we press log out it changes to not authorized in real time now if we refresh it we could see not authorized that means authentication authorization is working we can navigate around login logout is working we are able to save data in the browser storage which is persisting across browser refresh now uh, there is one more thing if you go to nav menu right now we are using users value from this claim this is one way but because we have implemented our auth state provider in a way we have one property which is this user current user so we can access this current user as well directly so instead of doing this thing here we have one more approach i'll simply copy it i'll command this line and here i'll say instead of using all these thing we could say our auth state provider dot current user dot name this is also going to do the same thing for us um, restarting it and we can see this right name is still coming if we log out now it is not coming if i refresh it should show login only yes if i log in and if i refresh it we should see logged in user's name that means that thing is also working for so this is how we can implement custom authentication in blazor web assembly stand alone or stand alone app now let me show you one more thing custom auth state provider let's add breakpoints in all these methods so first i have this authentication state change let's add it then i have this get authentication state async let's add this then we have this login and log out so this should be fine let's add all these four so if i'm running it first breakpoint it should hit the get authentication state async map this one this blazor framework calls it when we are first coming to our app so here it is checking it is trying to get the data from browser it got the data it will simply set this current user then we will get the auth state and we will return auth state on the basis of this auth state blazor would know that we are authenticated or not that means which should it go to authorized views authorized section or not authorized section now it is not going to call that method again in logout it will come to logout and after logout it will come to authentication state changed this property uh, this event and here we are going to check auth state is not null now it will check if we find the id if we did not find the id that means we are not authorized we are out of this if i log in it will come to login async doing everything now it will come here and this time it is going to get the id and it is going to set the current user and it knows that we are now logged in all right so i guess that's all for this tutorial do let me in the comment if you find it useful or if you are already aware of this thing so right now this seems complex complicated but it is not if you will implement it once end to end you will get familiar with it and it will be a piece of cake for you all right because so everything is logical if you understand the flow then it will be easy for you to implement
All right. So that's all for this video. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe my channel. I'll be back soon with some other video. Till then, bye bye.